Randy Sala, Assistant Professor of Business. And as we look and go through our marketing projects, I want to give you some help in how to write, format, and submit your projects for this course. As I mentioned in the welcome video, the projects are the bulk of the grade you're going to receive. They are 200 points apiece, which four of them make 800 points, so 80% of your grade. So, they're not very difficult. Uh, I'm going to walk you through how to optimize your grade. So when you come, again, this was Unit 1, Marketing Environment. Every unit looks very similar to itself. Here is your project. So, and again, your screen is going to look much cleaner than mine because I'm always in the edit author mode. But when you come to it, it should look just like this. Upload your assignment. Well, what you're going to do is grab the assignment first. You see the due date, which corresponds right to the course organizer. So friends, you have three and a half weeks to get this done. Plenty of time. Now, here is the project itself. You have to, it's in a different color, and of course once the little hand, the little finger there lights up, that's when you're going to get the project, and it pops up just like this. Okay? So, let's look at this. Project 1, Marketing Environment. Here's what I've done for you. I've pretty much put the chapters from chapter 1, from chapter 2, from chapter 2, from chapter 2. Chapter 2 is a pretty big uh, chapter. Uh, to chapter 3. So you can go right to your book and find the answers. You can also use uh, online sources, the PowerPoints, the notes. Uh, just make sure that we are referencing correctly and you're putting it back in your own words. So the marketing process. This is big. Define the marketing process. These the answers to your questions are never one word answers. They're never one or two sentence answers. They are their writing projects, and I'm going to show you what the format should look like and how you should do it. So, the first part of this question, understanding the marketplace. All right, we have to do that in the marketing world. We have to design a value-driven marketing strategy, constructing integrated marketing program to deliver customer value. And again, you're going to find these headings in the book. Creating customer relationships and capturing value. Each one of these, okay, so we, we've listed them you're going to explain and define each one of those bullets. All right. And then from the business portfolio, chapter two, define the Boston Consulting Group's growth share matrix. That is one of the historic consulting matrix that we've had in business for the past probably 50 years. Um, some people say it may be outdated, but it's very good to look at. It gives you at least a baseline of how to evaluate and analyze products in the marketing world. Strategic planning, target market, positioning, chapter two. Again, these are going to be your answers. Now what you're going to do is, it's why you have Microsoft Word, which we give to you for free. Find it on the Marketing 1311 homepage. Uh, download, I mean, actually get the access to it, it's free and uh, you'll start a new you know, file, and that's going to be, you're going to label it your project one. This is what you're going to do, the marketing process, okay? That is your heading, and that's when you're going to answer these questions. You don't need to rewrite what I have written. Um, it's just easier to use the numbers and the nice heading that I have given you here. So, uh, we go down. How many questions do we have here, Mark said? So we have seven questions. And so if you work on one uh, a, a day, a couple a week, you're, you're going to be fine uh, doing this. Trying to do this at the last minute on September 15th, again, you're going to be uh, very frustrated because it's, it's not going to be good. It's, it won't. So here are your directions. There's a note on my grading style. But I have a grading rubric for you. Okay and an example of how your courses, excuse me, how your projects for this course should be written. So that's the next part of our video. video. You want to print all of these out, my friends. Don't just leave them online and think I can go back to it anytime you can. Print it out, look at it, read through it. 
read through the chapter, read through these questions and, and where you'll find them. It'll make it so much easier. Again, just real quickly, uh, I go into much full, more full detail in the next part of our video, but it's going to be in Microsoft Word, okay? Please don't send pages, don't send Google Docs or an RTF file. Google Docs is nothing to send, it's something to share. Once in a while, I get a student who says, here's my link to my Google Docs, check it out. Uh, I'm not going to grade that. Uh, Google Docs is good for sharing. You can always export into a Word or PDF. You can certainly send a PDF if you're wanting to do another word processing program like Pages for Mac. Just at the end, when you're finished and ready, convert to PDF or Word file, and then I can take it from there. So now, let's look at the grading rubric that I have provided for you. So friends, here is the grading rubric guide for your written and business projects. And this is for my classes of BUSI 1301 and Marketing 1311. Uh, I want to give you some help in how to write. Again, the business advisory committee meetings that I go to and the business community have said time and time again that the written communication from so many college graduates is lacking and it's very difficult to read and to send proposals to customers. So this is how we are going to format our projects. So please read through the guide that you have and it's on every you know, assignment, but every project will include a title page. Title your work and include your name. Okay, your answers, all right, will be numbered and you'll use the heading that I have provided for you, all right, on each project that you have. So, use bullets and short paragraphs. A paragraph, my friends, in business writing should never exceed six sentences. Um, unfortunately, you've been taught in English Composition 1 and 2 that Basically, a paper looks like one giant paragraph, so to speak, with double spacing, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, that's not what the business world would like to see. So we are going to use shorter paragraphs, no more than six sentences. Every new topic should be its own paragraph. So if you're writing about economics and competition, the three forms of competition, or whatever the question may be, each new thought should be its own bulleted paragraph. I'm going to show you an example here. Okay, um, we do not use double spacing. Double spacing has, has no place in, a, in, in business writing in a proposal. Use one uh, to 1 1.5 line spacing. Per, personally, I use 1.15. That is a very good look to a uh, to your project 11 or 12 point font for the body and 14 to 16 point font for your headings anything larger makes it very difficult to read i do not want to see body text at 14 to 16 font okay uh, 11 to 12. so number your pages what about grammar and syntax every project that you write Assume you are going to deliver this to a vice president of marketing, vice president of operations, or a vice president of communication to the company that you wish to work for. Would you be proud of what you have written and sent in? And do you want somebody to look at it? That's, 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 that's your audience, in my opinion, okay, as far as the look needs to be. So yes, spelling, grammar. All projects should be written in the utmost professionalism, proper grammar, punctuation, spelling. If it's filled with grammatical errors and resembles one giant paragraph and basically somebody has ignored everything I've said, uh, is not going to be graded well and it should have never been submitted. Now each campus does have its own writing center to help you in this area. Now uh, they're going to be busy, obviously but you can email your paper in. Maybe you have a friend, maybe you have a relative. It's always good to proofread your work. It's, it, it's, it's a necessity to proofread your work. Now, um, we are going to submit 
our assignments through SafeAssign. Okay, it's already loaded in your when you uh, upload your file. So do not plagiarize. Okay, uh, you can cite in either APA or MLA style, and that's just your bibliography page. Uh, but do not use the double spacing that APA and MLA one. We're just using basically, basically you just need a a, a uh, reference cited page. All right, your source is cited. Make sure you're not retweeting. You can go on the internet. You can find uh, some examples. You're going to be using your book and some of the notes. That is perfectly fine. Just rewrite it in your own words. A direct copy and paste, even if it is cited, is still plagiarism. So, you know, you're going to go on to different courses, to different universities, more than likely, in your career and in your educational journey. And I'm just trying to prepare you because if, if something gets caught at the university level of plagiarism, it, mean, it, it could mean dismissal. Uh, I just want you to rewrite it. I want you to, to do your best there. Okay? Again, do some research. Absolutely. Write it in your own words. Cite the source. By doing this, you're going to be in good shape. Now, on your safe assign, uh, if it reaches a 50% hit, and it will tell you because you get to see the report, you're going to need to rewrite parts of your paper. If you submit a paper with over 50% um, uh, sources that it, that it finds throughout the internet, uh, and you say, I'm not going to rewrite it, then you, you'll receive an F for a uh, pledge, or I'd receive an F if I did that. So um, just give me every chance here to, uh, to you know, not, not to let that happen. Okay, so there's the formatting, uh, the rubric. I... I've been, I've taken a lot of college classes and there has been sometimes and certainly in different semesters, all I wanted to do was make a B. Man, if I could just grab a B and get through this class and, and, and you know, do the good work, that'd be great. Well, here, here's what you do. You answer every question, every question on the project that you're working on, okay? You have the right formatting, grammar, spelling, syntax, and the minimum word count for the total project is 1,200 words, you should, you should get right about an 80, a B, fine grade in the college level. Now, my friends, sometimes a student misinterprets what I've just said, and they answer two out of 10 questions, but they put 1,200 words and say, hey, I think I'm done. That grade is an F because you have to answer every single question. So let's check this out. 10 questions on a, on a, on a paper. Uh, 120 que words, a question that gets you 1,200 words, again, answered correctly, good formatting, you should be in good shape. You want a higher grade? Well, I, I, I applaud you for that. An 85 equals this. All questions answered adequately, proper formatting, grammar, spelling, syntax, minimum word count for that total project is 1,700 words. All questions answered again, you get an 85. More than likely, again, all right, provided everything is done right. So that should be right at an 85. You want an A? Excellent. Again, all questions answered. Now we have in-depth research. So this is much more than 120 words per question, okay? Uh, good, great, you know, proper form and grammar. Word count is 2,200 words. Then you've got a 90. And for those who want to excel, pass that, lock, lock down 95. All right, excellent research, excellent formatting, grammar, spelling, minimum word count, 2,600 words, and there's a wow factor to it. I mean, it just looks great, and uh, I am very happy for you. I have had, in my time of teaching, uh, I'm not saying you have to do this, but there have been many students who do put in 4,000 word uh, papers and just amazing research. Now, that's just because they went over the top. You, you don't have to write that much, but I'm just saying some have. I've had many students write 500 words, and this is a very poor grade. I mean, you're not even at half of what the minimum requirement that I wanted, because I want you to make A's and B's in the class. And so that grade is more than likely an F, because there's questions that did not get answered. So if, you put, if I put forth minimal effort in what I do, I'm going to receive a minimal grade. Poor formatting, uh, syntax looks bad, and I would probably tell myself to drop the class. If that's the best I can do, is a five to 700 word, even anything under 1,200 words, doesn't, 
you know, I put very little effort in there, I'd probably just question myself and say, why am I even taking this class? All right, because I, I want you to do well. Uh, and not just in the class, I want you to do well in your careers. Now, I have been teaching a while, and once in a while, I've had a student come in and say, I, I've worked in the, in the corporate world for 22 years, and I've never had to do this. Well, well, first of all, I'd say congratulations. Sounds like you've had a good career, and uh, whatever you had to do in the corporate world is one thing, but what we do in this class is another, and this is the way it should look. So what should it look like? Well, here's a example. Now, this is for one of my other classes that I teach, personal finance. And this was an investments project. I, uh, I redacted a lot. It's just a couple of questions. But again, if you're using Microsoft Word, uh, you can use what you want as long as I get it back into a Word or a PDF file. So this was Microsoft Word, which you get for free, by the way. All right. And, uh, you know, it automatically has its title page you put in there. And so nice looking title. This was how what a question was answered. So it was investments, components of risk. You see, there's a number and there was the topic heading. And these are the components of risk in investments. So basically every item had its own paragraph. Inflation risk, interest risk, business failure, market risk and then systematic and unsystematic. As I read this, as you read this, you can get to the information very quickly. As you make your reports and sales proposals throughout your career, and you're giving this to a customer or to an executive vice president or to a venture capitalist for funding, they can go in and see exactly what they need to see very quickly. If I were to put this into one giant paragraph, hey, I, I just wouldn't even want to read it and I couldn't find the information that I need. Global investment risk, and again, work cited. Uh, this was the textbook. Yes, you do cite your textbook because your textbook is a reference. So uh, again, this particular paper had like 15 references because this was just one answer. And out of, out of about a 12 uh, uh, question project. So I hope and I believe this should give you some good guidance of my grading style, my grading rubric. I'm not trying to punish anyone. I'm trying to help you uh, really get into a writing, a technical business style writing that you can perform throughout your long and prosperous career, which I hope everyone enjoys. Okay, my friends, here we are back to where we started at the upload assignment. You have now created and written your amazing work and again, I'd like to reiterate the quality of your project. Think of this as the last step of the interview process for the dream job that you want. And you're, they're going to read your written work. It's very important. And so are you proud of it? Is it, is it going to be read by that uh, executive vice president, by that venture capitalist and give you funding? Things to think about as you submit your work. Okay. Here we are. This is the assignment submission area. Now, many of you are familiar with Blackboard, which is our learning management system. We call it MyTCC. And so here we go. You see text submission? Never write that. Never do that. You're not copying and pasting. It simply will not be graded. And we're coming down here. It's basically like you are attaching a file to an email. It's very much like that. Now, just wanted to remind. We are going through SafeAssign. This is a requirement. And so when you get your report back, if it's over 50% for some strange reason, you're going to need to go back and rewrite parts of your paper. It has to be under 50%. Now, again, in English class, if it's over 10%, they go crazy. I understand there's a lot of stuff that looks uh, that, that's close. So, you know, that's a pretty good one right there, my friends. So you also, you hit, I agree to submit my papers to global to the global reference. So when you browse, just come right here, browse, and there's my file, Randy Sala, because that's my name, you'd put your name, Project One Marketing Environment. You open it up, right here it hits you, uh, that you know you've got it. If you've made a mistake, and that's very easy to do, hey, we've all submitted the wrong file sometime, you can catch it right here and say, oh no, that's, that's the wrong plan. You just hit do not attach, and it will take it right off. Okay, a little bit of carpentry here, and I say that because let's 
let's measure one or two, let's measure three times to only cut it one time. Uh, you can submit as many times as you need to. If you go back and forgot, oh no, I did submit the wrong file. I understand. It happens. But I'm getting quite a few students submitting a project five, six times. And so I get six submissions. And when I look at that, I only am grading the last submission. So again, just a little bit of preparation. Make sure you got the right file. If you want to, you can add a comment down here, especially if you have submitted three or four, two or three or four times, just say, Mr. Sala, this is my final copy. Um, I forgot something in the other one, but this is my final copy to grade. And again, I will always go to the last copy unless, unless I see something somewhere else. But even if it's the last copy, please put that. This is the one that should be graded. Then you click the submit button. Now, you click submit, give it a few seconds. We are in a Wi-Fi internet crazy time. I'm sure your internet has gone down multiple times during uh, uh, this pandemic because we're all using it. When it's finished, you will have a green bar up here. It says project successfully saved and it will, it will give you a date stamp. This is why we only submit through our Blackboard course. It double protects us. You're protected and I'm protected. Please do not try to email me these assignments because emails, we're living in an ocean of emails, aren't we? Some go to clutter, go to junk, uh, some just get buried because we're probably getting literally 20 to 50 emails a day. And if you're in the corporate workforce, that you wish you only had that many per day. So please do not email. Make sure it says right in here. If it's bad, if there's something went wrong, it will go red. Now, if I try to submit, it will go red because professors cannot submit projects to themselves because we're not officially in the class. So I don't want to confuse anybody. But it will say green. Once it's that, you've got it. Everything is good. And this goes right to my gradebook where I can access your work. I can read it. I will leave you comments and I will do my best to get this graded in one week after September 15th. So friends, I certainly hope this video, you now know how to access your project. You know the requirements, you know how to write it, you know how to format it, and you know how to submit it. I am looking forward to reading your most excellent work.